Hello. Hello, wow, welcome to podcast number eight. Yes, we're growing slowly, slowly. <laughs> I'm Bridget. I'm Dana. And today's topic is uh, how to find business opportunities. How getting clients, clients. Yes. getting opportunities in the most effective way without being too expensive. Yes. Because we just, uh, in the previous session, we covered budgeting and spending and but this is about getting your clients in the most affordable way. Yes, because um, as we spoke about before, um, there are so many type of activities you can do, but the cost will be low. Uh, yeah. Not everything you need to do, you need to pay for some companies, lots of money for them to give you some business opportunities or whatsoever. Uh, but one of the things I say in my business coaching that uh, a business opportunity you can find everywhere and it's only up to you to create the opportunities because yes. the opportunities are there yep. it's either you noticing them or not and mm. it's all about you it's not no one else because you can actually just sit like if you look at us we're in a networking event the conversation was actually starting in a different way we ended up like not saying anything about business collaboration no. or anything and then out of that like something that I was thinking about I came and offered it to you and then we just roll it and look where we are now exactly and, and we and we at that point we didn't know each other I think we'd, we'd spoken maybe two or three sentences we literally literally two or three sentences and then you were like <laughs> hey let's do this and I'm like oh okay awesome I don't know if I want to do it okay cool let's do it and that's kind of it and you even asked me why did I offer it to you yes <laughs> I did I and did. I said that I was trusting my intuition and that's how I felt but Inside of me, I felt there's this is something I want to do, and I felt that it's a great opportunity to do it with you, and this is how we rolled, and we both noticed like, and I could have offered it to you, and you would have said no, mm. but in a way, I actually gave you an opportunity, but yes. you missed it out, and that's what I think I was trying to say when I'm saying it's up to you to create the opportunity. It's there. I but, created yeah. an opportunity for myself and for you, but you could have ignored it and not see it as an opportunity. And the situation would have been different. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I think also when it comes to clients, you know, a big thing that we don't do, which we could do a lot more of, is asking our current clients for referrals. If they're happy and they've been with us for a while, you know, they've got lies. So when it's not like they're just thinking about us 24-7. So it's up to us, whoever, you know, whoever your clients are, to say to your clients, look, you know, could you possibly refer me to somebody if you're happy with what I do? Is there somebody that you know who's looking for something very similar? Ask your clients for referrals. It's the easiest way to get more business. And the only reason that they don't is because they've got other things they're thinking about. No other reason. You know? So I think like when you look at the business, and this is one of the things I'm really trying to teach my clients, you need to, when you search for business opportunities, you need to look at like on your current clients, what you can do with them. Because if you already got clients, you already invested the money, the time, and the effort to get to them get in the first them. place. So yes. why do you want to spend that money again instead of, you know, using something that you already paid for that you're already That's using? Yes. Um, and there's so many things that you can do with your current clients. Uh, you can uh, actually offer them like certain discounts if they will, you know, give you for every referral they'll get a certain discount. Whatever, like it's depending on that, your business. If you're selling a product, you say on your next product you're gonna get X percentage of a discount. There's so many things you can do with your existing clients. Yeah. yeah, this is very important because you always need to remember you already paid the money to get this clients. You yeah. already put your time and effort and whatever it is that you put into it to get these clients. And Why do you want to spend more? And there's also nothing better than when it's through somebody else. So if one of your clients goes and refers you to somebody else, it's way more powerful than obviously you saying to somebody, I'm amazing, because of course you're going to say you're amazing. You're hard to get, you know, you're going to go, no, I'm not. So it's, it carries a lot more weight when it comes from somebody else. And even with testimonials, you know, I have to be honest, I think testimonials, you know, testimonials are great. I'm just not a big fan of posting them all over social media and thinking that that's going to generate business. Maybe that's just me. I, just, I think it's, do, it's, you need to put it on your feedback site, on your sure. Facebook page, and, and maybe on the website yep. if you want to. But it's not necessarily the right thing for every type of business. Um, let's say if you sell food and everything, yes, you want people to post on your page. Yes, you want them to share the feedback because people want to know like, wow, what is it's Because sometimes a lot of time, 
food can look bad on the pictures or food can be looking good yeah. on the picture. It but it doesn't say anything about the taste. And you want other people to say, yes, no, I like it or not. Mind. If yeah. you're buying a product, so if you look even today on uh, applications like, let's say, Wish, when you buy a, a certain type of clothing, right, you can put pictures of not only uh, uh, how it looks on the model, but also how it looks on the actual people that buy it. And that's eventually yeah. what I want to see. Yeah. And when I look for an item over there, I also see how it looks on other people. I just like, hmm, you know what it actually doesn't look like? Because you know your body, you know pretty much how things yeah. will kind of look like. And then when you see it on other people, it helps you to decide. So every type of business needs to understand what type of feedback, what type of like, let's say, um, promotions will happen. And it's part of it. And, and also where your target market hang out. You know, I don't mean in a, in a weird way that you're going to start hanging out in places just to sort of get clients. It's just if they do hang out, if, if they are the type of people that play golf or they are the type of people that um, go to networking events or being exposing yourself to those places and to being in the spaces where your target market are going to be because that would kind of make sense because if you meet people on a what's that kind of social level it's way better to build the relationship and to start the relationship and then down the line you, you go into the business side but you just start it on a hey it's like it's kind of like a bit of a date you know yeah. you meet you have a bit of a banter you know you just and it's a build up it's not it an is, immediate it is. And you need to remember, you're selling products to people. You're selling service to yeah. people. And people are looking to buy from people, not from like a computer or something. And, and if that's why you need to try to create that type of connection and to have like a relationship with them. And you, this yes, is something you need yeah. to work on with your customers. Build a relationship. If you build a strong relationship with your clients, then they will automatically will refer you to other people that they know that you can assist with. Um, I said with my business, like, like I think like if you look at our type of business consultation and uh, people that do social media, it's a lot of the time comes from word to mouth. Because yeah. if someone is happy, they will naturally they will naturally will say something good about you. If you're not happy, you're even more gonna say like, mm. listen, this type of person, you're gonna make sure that a lot of people know about it. Um, but when you actually trying to look for business opportunities, there's like so many platforms today to search for and as you said like social media is only part of it but and it's I, only one part of it yeah like and you get me, the example of networking events yeah, uh, social golf, media is, whatever social media is also great for uh, reminding people maybe educating people having an actual credibility but i think that consistently spamming posting selling stuff just personally drives me nuts and i i wouldn't you know, that's not how I would personally choose I somebody. Do, with this, I disagree. With this, I disagree. Um, I think it's all about how you manage yourself on social media. I would not necessarily post on a daily basis. And I would choose wisely what am I posting or not. And I'm linking all of it. But let's say if you've got specific days that you can do something on it and get some more opportunities. So even if it's me, like if let's say you just, I'm posting on a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. But there's some event this month on a Thursday. So I'm maybe not going to post on a Friday. I'll do it instead of Thursday. I'm going to play around it. Because, uh, yeah, you don't also want to be over and to push over. You also need yeah. to do it very smart. But I, th um, I would rather take, just my opinion, but I would <laughs> rather take the time and the energy and do something like this or go to a networking event and go and meet more people go to social events and meet more people because for me it really is about that connection with the person there's so much noise on social media that one more posting of one more ad for me is one more bit of noise whereas if i meet somebody and we, we like i think oh they're an awesome person oh what do you do oh man i'm i'm look, I'm, I'm actually looking for somebody to copyright or, or whatever the case is you know, for me, there's a great chance that... So I think it's a matter of balance. Yeah. And I do believe in it. Like, to find, like, everyone got a different type of formula that will work for them. Mm. And that's what you eventually you will need to find. What's right for you and what's right for your business? What's right for your personality? Uh, if you're that type of a person that you need to be most of the time in front of a computer because you're not good at networking, so do, yeah. let's say, 80% 
of your time on social media, mm. but still find 20% to push yourself outside of your comfort zone and do things outside. Yes. So I'm not saying do only that because you need to push yourself, but find a balance. Yeah. So like I will do on my business, for example, I'll do, I'll do like social media, but I'm also going to go once in a while to some networking events and I'll do the podcast and I'll speak to my clients and things like that. So eventually I will find like what's fine for me. Mm. Uh, and that's the important part. Like, how do you find a balance to what's going to suit your business, what's going to suit you as a person, but still pushing yourself to do things that you're not feeling so comfortable with? And I think looking for, for ways to, to build your client base where you are taking some out of your comfort zone and doing a minimal amount of spend and making sure that it is your right target market because then you also want to keep within your rate. So if you charge a certain rate, that's what you charge. I'm a big believer in that. I'm not a I'm not a believer in giving away what it is you do. I believe in giving away value. And if you do, so if you're if you're blogging or you are vlogging or something like that, you're giving away content which is value. But the actual service itself, I believe that if you have a rate, that's the rate. Where for me, where it comes in is the negotiation of it. So in other words, if somebody says, okay, my budget is X, and I'll say, okay, so this is what I charge, they'll say, okay, well, how about instead of coming for coaching once a week, why don't you come every two weeks? So they're still spending the same. I'm not, I'm not cheapening what I do, and it's kind of a win-win for so both. So we'd hear a bit disagree with you, because okay. I will do some adjustments in my uh, rate because I really want to help my clients, and I do understand where they're coming from. Mm-hmm. But I will find a way to balance it in other things, yes. But also, like, I'm thinking under consideration that also, like, when you start a business, um, the things that you can start from a set of base and then go up and build yourself up. So it's also part of it how you, you know, how you build yourself in it. Because, yes, it depends stuff, on your product the stuff or that service. I'm really, yes. So, like, if I look at my side on the market, so there's stuff, yes, I cannot give a more discount. But there's stuff that I can do can come towards my clients and can try to help. So if I can do it, I will do it. But I also believe like in like, for example, business opportunities, we're talking about how to find. So let's say you try, there's like different events that are happening all the time and you can contribute like and to that oh, yeah. and donate like a prize, like yes. a one-on-one with you or what's yes. a, what other, what other that's things. That's great. So yeah. that's a way for you also, you give something, so you feel good also yes. with yourself, let's be honest. The second part is that you're actually exposing yourself to a new community, mm, a new absolutely. target audience, and something like, uh, you know, and you, it's a mix of things. And by going there and give it, you can build, you can be opening yourself to more business opportunities. Oh, no, I agree with you on that. I totally agree. I think giving yourself, sounds a bit strange, but giving yourself away as a prize, uh, like a door prize or whatever you want to call it, is, no, I think that's a great idea because somebody may have experienced or gets opportunity to experience what is your offering, which maybe ordinarily would not have done it. True. Yeah. So there's True. a, and, and I think also with what both of us do, it's very much about the connection. You've got to have it that, is. It you've is. got to have the connection. It's you know if if, they, if the person's not connecting to you or they're not connecting to me, they're not going to want to do coaching or workshops around marketing or personal development if they're not vibing with that. So like, mm, no, I don't like you know that. So that's so that's where that great opportunity lies. You know, when you so do I fully give. agree, like, um, and that's part of it. And that's like when you, there's a difference between if you sell a product, and yeah. it's a product that's gonna fit to everyone. So then you've got a wider uh, target audience mm. to reach out to. So you've got different platforms to use. But in certain type of uh, businesses, like let's say when we do a consulting, you actually get it from us as a person, and you need to feel like the connection, like you said. So. I will find business opportunities not only on social media because on social media you're not necessarily gonna get me and I think that's why I figured we thought about doing the podcast yeah because that's a way for you guys to look at us and see full the connection get, vibe yeah, energy you whatever you get out of it mm-hmm. uh, but on the same time I will go to some networking events yeah. I will find different activities to do outside of social media because I cannot only rely on the social media yeah um, no one can rely only on social media and that's one of the things I always remind to my clients as well and when I do the coaching is that social media is only one part of marketing. Mm. It's not only like the main marketing tools that you're going to use. There's so many things to you to do. Like, you know, and when you do go to networking events, just don't be that person 
that goes up to every single person and just hands out business cards and just tries to sell and sell. There is nothing worse. There's always that person. Yeah. That, that, you know, you haven't even you haven't even introduced each other. You don't you don't even know their name. They don't know your name. You don't necessarily know if like their business might to your business if there's yes. actually something to collaborate about or speak about. Yeah, and there they are shoving business cards and just trying to just sell whatever it is they're they're offering. And that for me is the worst. Like you've got to have that. I fully agree. You know, you've got to have the relationship first. So I think I think networking is important because we would never have met if it had been through networking. And I think through everything I've ever done, all the contacts I've made have been through networking. So if you don't network, if there's a, your ch- the chances, and very often it's not the people at the network who become your clients, it's the people that they know. But if you don't put yourself out there, they're not going to know who they're going to know who they're going to know. So there's no spinoff, right? Yes. Yeah. And again, even if you're selling a product, and I know we both do service, so it's, it, we, it, it's easy for us to speak that side, but even if you have like a product... Yes, go to your networking. Teach other people about your product. Yeah. Tell them, sell them the idea behind your product. Why have you decided to, you know, sell this specific product or products? And like, and you do that, and then they think, oh, you know what? That's actually a good product. Maybe I want to buy it as a gift. Maybe I want to. Oh, I've got a friend. I have, like, you know, it's like all the time. The beautiful thing with the product. The beautiful thing. And actually, I wouldn't mind maybe one day having a product. I, don't, I have no idea what it would be. <laughs> but the beautiful thing about a product is it's a touch, taste, feel, well, I suppose, taste depends on what it is. I get that. But it's a whole experience. So you're going to someone, you're going, here, yeah, this is what I've got. And they can have the whole experience where they can take it away. As opposed to a service where you're going, okay, you can't touch it, taste it, feel it. But you just, you can have the experience of it. So it's so much harder with a service. Whereas with a product... It's way easier, especially at networking events, especially... It is. It is. Product is always... Of it. Product is not necessarily easy on social media. Okay, and I apologize for a bit of noise that maybe going to be now. Uh, but product is not easy to sell on social media versus uh, a service. Yeah. Um, although, you know what, when I think about it... Service is also not that easy to sell on social media because you know you want to know who's the, the connection. service provider. Yeah. Like if there's a connection, if there is like a vibe over there. Uh, but a product, and also it depends on the type of product, a lot of people want to touch and feel it, as you mm. said. Um, so you find you've got different, you can go to markets and do it in different markets. You can have companies that are doing like a day that they're selling. Um, or you can stock it in another shop. You know, you can contact another, uh, another. I was going to say supplier, maybe not supplier, but another shop and say, you know what your product is, can I stock my whatever here, you know, and you pay them. It is, and you know whatever. what, and that's what I said, like, you, it's up to you to create opportunities. So mm. let's say I'm selling a product, and I'm walking now in a shopping center, and I see a store that sells something similar, or like the same vibe, or the same I look and feel out of it. So we nothing will happen to me, other. yes, yeah. and nothing will happen if I'm actually going to get inside to the store and I'm going to ask them, who's the manager here, can I offer something, can I show something, and I just do that, walk, yes, yeah, so it's not easy to come and do it, yes, you need to push yourself, but it's going to be worth it, because if, let's say out of like five stores, one will say yes. You open yourself Maybe even to more, bigger right? yeah. I just get like, like I always prefer to go to the lower number. Okay. So okay. you won't be that disappointed. Okay, okay. Chance could be a little bit more than five, but yeah. I mean, no, I said, let's say out of five that you offered your product to, one will agree. So let's say for every five you're going to yeah. offer, one will agree. I think, yeah, I think again, when it comes to any of these things, we, I don't think we realize how much more, I'm just being realistic, just how much more challenging it is than, than, what it really is. Like, I think we think, well, you know, I'll go speak to a few people and it will kind of happen. And sometimes it does, but that doesn't mean it's not going to work. It just means you've just got to keep finding that right outlet in the case of having a product that's what we're talking about, right? Yes. And the other thing I was just thinking about is, are you speaking to three people a day? So whether it's um, previous clients, whether it's people in your network, whether it's um, people you wanted to follow up on, but are you speaking to like three people a day, touching base? I'm not saying punting because that's that's just hectic, but just kind of touching base, like going for a coffee. Because I think when you when you're building on the relationship, you become top of mind, vice versa. And then when the need arises, the person will turn around and go, "Hey, are you here? Market yet? Great, because you've kept the build up, you've kept the relationship. But if it goes dormant," They're not going to suddenly wake up and go, oh, marketing. Uh, do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like but if you look at it also for marketing side, like even all big companies, the reason why they pay for those billboards, 
that's a lot of money that necessarily brings something into the business, but they do it in order to stay in top of mind, for you to always remember them. But they can afford themselves to put it out there. So you need to find different way how to stay out there. And one of the ways also, like, let's say you've got a client base already, sell them an email campaign, you know, mm -hmm. communicate them through that. Um, yeah, that's a good one. Communicate them with like some, I don't know, different promotions that you send them by email. Or like a nice text okay. message as long that as you, you got actually. Uh, well, you know, no, you've got so to listen. Be able to unsubscribe. So when so, so when you send an email yeah. campaign, most of the software you will use, and there's something I do also for my clients that email campaigns. You've got an option to unsubscribe. Yes. yes. So that's of course it's by law. You need yeah, to. Yeah, you have to have uh, it. But why not? Why not give it a try? Most people don't do unsubscribe, but if you're going to actually send them an email on a weekly basis. So yes, they will probably maybe gonna no, I think once a month. Once, once, once a month is great because if, especially if you've already signed up for for something, a product or a service, so you're on the emailing list. And I know it happens to me. And then suddenly once a month, I get an email from whomever I bought something from, and suddenly they're top of mind again. I'm like, so if I'm not interested, I can delete it. And if I am, I go, oh, that's interesting. They've got a new product, or they've got a new service, or they've got a new event, and it just reminds you. And I think once a month is very subtle. So Not I think offensive. you can do even, let's say, between once to twice a month. It yeah. depends. Like if you've got a promotion, if you've got a new product, you can play with it. But it's not more than that. And you don't also, it's a, way, it's, a, it's a good way yeah. also to see, like with some of the software you use, uh, you can see how many people open it, who open it, how many yeah. times they click, and you can communicate with them. There's so many things you can do. Um, and the ones that don't open it, and the ones that are not your sort of following and are not that interested, I also think just don't don't keep them on your emailing list because if they're not interested, rather find people who are, find people who are out No, but that's wanting. not exactly true because sometimes you can send, like I think if it's a, like an ongoing that they never open it, so yes, you can that's maybe remove I mean, it. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they can, maybe this product is not relevant for oh, them. Oh, no, 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 no. Like, I mean, okay. not an ongoing. So we're talking about yeah. okay, like an ongoing. Yeah. Um, but also like there's so many ways to communicate. Like even like one way to also get business opportunities, your friends. Your friends got also yeah, friends, and their friends got absolutely. also friends to so build it up. You know, there's so many things you can do. You can even maybe depend, like let's say you're selling a product, invite your friends to your place and ask them to invite another friend with them and present the product to them and see what comes out yeah. of it and give a special price on that product on that day. Mm. It's like one thing, you can do it at your own place. You don't need to invest money in bring the people because it's a friend, bring a friend. And that's it. And you give yourself another platform to sell your product and to yeah. expose yourself. So there's a lot of things that you can do. And as you can see, and not everything will cost you much money or even if it costs money. The interesting thing is also very often your friends actually don't know what you do. Be interesting. They don't know, really think, fully understand Yeah, it. so maybe do that. Try that little experiment. Have a chat to your friends and say to them, what do I do? Because very often they'll be like, mm, you do something, I'm not really too sure. And they can be your best promoters if they because if there's already the trust there's a great relationship there's all of the above and yet they're not going to only because they're like mm, what does she do and they don't want to look like the idiot because they don't really know what you do so that's often why they don't whereas if they've got a good understanding at all you know why would they not if they could help sure. you, they will you know and eventually it's like you know like like a lot of time people think things like oh if i invite all my friends to like your business page uh, people will get irritated. But no, like you're actually helping both sides. You're helping yeah. one person get more business opportunities. And then you don't even know, like maybe some of us actually looking for that type of a service because you're not really in touch with every one of them on a daily basis, not even some of them like on a monthly basis. Let's be honest with you. Most of my friends on Facebook and social media, we're not friends on a daily basis. Well, not even on a monthly basis. I mean, exactly. look at, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just in your it is so why not you so you're not aware about that and you can also find different business collaboration and that's the thing like business are always there business opportunities are always there you just need to learn how to pick them up how to reckon that there's something there and let's give it a try you've got nothing to lose because it's already there especially if it's free if it's free then why not like it was like this this is a perfect example you know when this opportunity presented itself it's like well it's gonna cost a bit of time but that's it you know, so why why not take every single opportunity that comes your way? Because you just don't know. Yes, and it's not that we necessarily see wins out of it like immediately in results. Yeah. And it builds up and we see that we got more and more viewers and by the way, if you like it, 
So feel free to like, like, like share, share feedback. feedback, any feedback. It's very important. Mm. Um, we actually need to learn also to say more often that like any feedback will be much appreciated. Um, and just, yeah, so that's how we started. So we're getting more and more views. We're getting more and more some business opportunities slowly, slowly out of it because people can see who we are and what we're given, what, you know, and they yeah. decide if, if they have a connection or not. So why are you in that? I think also with that, by just by doing something like this, it also, you know, if there's certain areas you get a bit rusty on, and I mean, I was a part of a company where we taught people how to develop their relationships to grow their business. So it, in essence, what we're discussing, I was in a, a partnership with this kind of a business for about three years, and that's all I did was focusing on building relationships. And I think that when you when you've been immersed in something and then you've left it, you've gone into something else, you can kind of get a bit rusty. So by doing these, we end up. I mean, I know that I definitely end up going and doing more research and kind of touching base, and so it keeps you researching and, and studying and keeps your mind stimulated so that you are continuously developing and growing. And that's also the nice thing, by the way, in networking events because you meet new people, you get yeah. new opinions, new feedback. You see different things, you know, and, and you can come with ideas that you were like, oh, I actually never thought about it. Yeah. But someone just says something, and, and we actually spoke about it after our last session. That <laughs> I said, like, you know, when we speak about things, sometimes like, it makes me think. I was like, hmm, maybe I'm too hard on myself. Maybe I should do this. And then I'm coming with more ideas to myself yeah. and to my business. And then we speak about it after. But it it's like is. a brainstorming session, it it is. isn't it? Like it while, is. we, while we're actually doing it, and then even afterwards, it's both of us it's like a bit of a brainstorming session. We're thinking, hmm, okay, well, should we try that? And it also almost re stimulates things that you could do, which you just kind of hadn't thought about doing. Yeah, so, and that's the nice thing. Even for you guys now, taking the time to listen to us. You can come with so many ideas that will be beneficial for your business. And Just share. by listening. That's a business opportunity. What we do now, yes. you're listening. It's a business opportunity. Um, either it's a business opportunity for us or it's an opportunity for you. And if you guys will share comments and things like that, you can also maybe meet other people like, and have other yeah. business opportunities around that. Um, so I think if we're just going to sum it up, um, as part of like, if we take from where we started, like do preparation and building yourself, I think also how to find business opportunities, except for it's, it's up to you mm. to notice them and yes. to do something with them. But it's also just... And for it to be cost-saving, because, because, because last week we spoke about these... The budget. Know, budget part. and spending and saving money. and So this is in line with that, like finding ways to get clients to generate business without spending a lot of money, because that's a big thing with the startup, is you just want to make sure that you're not overspending and overcapitalizing, because that just stresses you out. I think so, and I think if we, if you're actually touching again the budget, and there's so many opportunities around us that we can just pick them up with no cost or low yeah. cost. Not everything needs to cost you money, and I can say from a corporate side that we used to pay for companies to give us business up, a business lease. That's not if actually oh, people would actually yes, but you corporate corporate yes. But, <laughs> But if you're actually your business owner and you actually knock door by door and you go and you communicate with people, you can get it for free without even like paying money out of it. It's just that's more that's more out of your comfort zone. Like it's exactly. way easier just to spend. But even sorry, else. sorry, but even let's take it from the side and you get the as a let's say I'm a seller and I got the business opportunities from the company. Yeah. Even to pick up the phone, it's not necessarily an easy thing for everyone. No. But as I said, if like as I said in the beginning, so let's say do 70% of your time or 80% of time what's in your comfort zone. But at least find at least a minimum, I think, of like 10 to 20 At minimum 20%. Okay, so I was being nice. Okay, so let's say 20%. 20% out of your comfort zone. Exactly. Yeah, you need to. You, you need to. Because that. that's the only way you can grow with your business. I believe in that. Otherwise, you're just going to be one of a million other people that are doing exactly the same thing. And why do you want to do it? So it's like the uh, definition for insanity, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different outcome. Mm. Why? Push yourself yeah. to do things that you're not used to, that's not going to be easy for you. And just take that challenge. Like every single day, make, you know, whether it's one or whether it's three, but make sure every single day you make contact with a person that you either want to develop a relationship with or somebody you could be a potential client or who was a client. Just one person a day would be amazing. Just that. So our next topic? 
So next topic we're gonna be mm-hmm. talking about. We're gonna I think expand more about the business opportunities, how to reach yeah. out to them, how to win them, how to get more out of it, mm. so we can contribute more to the side of the when you plan life for your budget. So how you can actually yeah. uh, stick to your budget through so this that. This is quite a broad it's topic. Very, it yeah. is, and you've got a lot to do around that. Mm. Um, so again, thank you for watching. Thank uh, you. Give us a like. Oh, She's laughing at my heart. <laughs> and, think, and give us a comment and any positive, any feedback. Bad or good, let us know. And then next week, we're going to see you on Wednesday. Yes. Not on Tuesday. Yes. Uh, so have an awesome week. Thank you. Thank Bye, you. everyone. Bye.